Hi everyone, my name is Soul, and I, I kind of like Mass Effect. I don't know if you're familiar with this channel, I have a decent amount of Mass Effect videos. And I've made certain videos about the Mass Effect 3 ending. And I'm not gonna lie to you, this, this game's ending right here, it's been haunting me for a decade, and I'm finally putting it to bed today. We recently learned about the original Reaper Queen ending that was proposed, and we're gonna talk about that. We're also going to talk about the image that Bioware released on N7 Day. So I want to talk about the whole Reaper Queen situation, talk about certain conclusions I've come to the game, and the future. But before we begin, if you are a Mass Effect fan and you have not subscribed, please do yourself a favor and do so. I have a lot of Mass Effect videos down the, down the pipeline. Some of them are big videos and they're gonna take a long time. I have a laundry list of videos I need to make that uh, is about a mile long at this point, but there's a lot of Mass Effect videos in there, so stay tuned. But yes, finally, I've come to the end of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I got 95% of the trophies, played on Insanity Difficulty, did the whole shebang, had a great time, and I feel like I've finally made peace. Yes, there is no secret ending at the at the end of the tunnel like i was hoping there would be but that's okay because after watching a certain video that i will link down below by people make games it's basically a documentary style video really interviewing former bioware employees some current some old and really seeing what happened and how we came to the mass effect 3 ending god damn it you died again soul what are you doing back there this video really put a lot into perspective it is amazing how a couple of interviews with some of the people making this game really got me behind the scenes and it, it finally fell into place after all these years so go and watch that video if you want to know more about the reaper queen ending it's there's gonna have a lot more information in that video this is more a reaction to it. Bioware's animation director Dave Wilkinson basically put it all into perspective. He got a script and he was making storyboards for that original script and within that script originally in Mass Effect 3 Commander Shepard instead of walking up to the Star Child he hooks his like brain up to the Citadel and that allows him to talk to a Reaper Queen. Keep in mind that Dave Wilkinson didn't like say any of this was concrete he was just halfway remembering bits and pieces but what he said was that when you plug your brain up, you can talk to a Reaper Queen. Once you are speaking to her, she tells the story of how she tried to get the Reapers to evolve. But the Reapers reject her. They say, we're not going to do shit. We're going to stay big, dumb robots for the rest of the time. We're just going to farm more Reapers, and that's our purpose. They lock her away. But she says, now that we got the Crucible, there's a couple of things we can do. You can basically take my place as head of the Reapers and... That's the Paragon option. You're such a benevolent god that you can tell the Reapers what to do, you control them, save the universe, prosperity, very much like the original endings. Or she gives you the synthesis route, which is literally just synthesis. The renegade option is actually a little bit different. You just unplug yourself, you say fuck you, you blow up her mainframe, that blows up the Citadel, that blows up all of Earth. Everybody's dead, but the Reapers are dead too, the galaxy is saved. I'm guessing Commander Shepard did not actually live uh, through that version. I like the idea of the Reaper Queen so much better than what we actually got. This small boy who died and then suddenly appeared in his nightmares is suddenly the catalyst, but also the crucible, and is willing to work with Shepard even though it was entirely against Shepard like a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, I don't really get that. The Reaper Queen's motivation actually makes more sense, and it makes more sense of what I am speaking to. I actually understand what I am speaking to. There is no retconning, and there is no, like, big leap of faith. Sure, the synthesis ending still has space magic, but what can you do? That being said, this still has three different endings, and those three different endings are very different. I don't know why Casey Hudson ever went on record to say that there is not going to be an ABC choice. This far back into production, there was always an ABC choice. And now it makes more sense how we got the Star Child. We basically almost just took like two steps back and there's extra little leaps of face we have to make. But it makes sense how we got the ending we got. I can see the gears that led up to this result. But the Crucible randomly having a failsafe that lets you control them all, a random ass organic, 
and the crucible also allowing a person's DNA to spread throughout everybody and that it's just so out of nowhere and sure we've known about it for a decade now and we've like kind of like wrapped our heads around it but when this game originally came out without the extended cut this did not make any sense it was just bad but after watching these interviews i really can understand the amount of crunch that these guys had this was a very stressed out studio that was rushing this game because they were given such a strict deadline and they were still able to make a phenomenal game despite that i think Casey Hudson, maybe like one or two other writers just made a dumb decision in a room somewhere at some point, And that's how we got the ending we got. That is unfortunate, but that was the ending that they originally wanted. I remember thinking back in the day that this is somehow EA's fault. EA rushed the ending so bad that they, they were just like, here, whatever. We don't give a shit. But this is the ending that they wanted. And I remember back in the day saying like, oh, they got to change it. They they have to. And my mind was saying those things because I really thought this couldn't be the ending that they wanted. But now that I have full perspective, finally, I can finally understand that this is what they wanted. And I can respect that now. I don't want them to change something if it means it's going against their own wishes. If this is the ending they wanted and if it's the ending that they're satisfied with, they should keep it the way it is because that's how art works. I never knew the amount of death threats that they got or some of the levels that fans were going to to complain to these people. I was upset as everybody else, but never in a million years would I harass a female writer for being a female writer or like outright send death notes. There was people who sent the cupcakes into their studio and it was supposed to be three different flavors that were red, green, and blue. And then it turns out they were all the same flavor. That was kind of funny. I'm not going to lie. That was somewhat genius. But uh, yeah, I, I think that is still a little bit creepy though. But you can imagine being a game designer, a writer, an animator. And you are given this very strict deadline for this game. And you make a phenomenal game despite that. You are crunching your ass off. And the game comes out and because... It was kind of a dumb ending. People are in outcry. And then you go right back into Crunch to make a free DLC that has to be made like within a couple months. I can understand the frustration. I can understand the pain that the people at Bioware went through. And considering that Dragon Age 2 happened the way it is because again, Crunch, EA, Bioware was an unhealthy studio at one point. Apparently Dragon Age Inquisition was like the straw that broke the camel's back. And you have seen what's happened since then. <laughs> there were some unhealthy things going on at Bioware. And Mass Effect 3's ending was not even the beginning, not even the ending. This is just another bad mark on Bioware's name. And, and a big reason why I was so upset at the ending is I didn't feel like I got my closure. I felt like my story just wasn't completed. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't feel that way anymore. Playing the Legendary Edition, seeing the full story in its context, and back in the day, I couldn't have played DLC. I had no way to play DLC back in the day. And I was able to play the DLC now. Just the Citadel ending gives so much closure to these characters. The Leviathan DLC gives uh, somewhat of a backstory for the Reapers. It puts things into a little bit better perspective. I still think the ending is unsatisfactory. I don't think it's a good ending. I don't think it's a terrible ending either. At one point, I would have gone on record to say that the ending is just straight up dog shit. But... I feel like whenever I reached the end of this game, I had closure with these characters. I put everything on the line. It was Commander Shepard riding into the sunset, and I'm happy with the results. So no, there is no new Easter egg, but that is okay, because Mass Effect 3 is still an amazing game, and despite its ending not being amazing as the rest of the game, it's not as bad as I once thought it was. That being said, Mass Effect is not over. Bioware released this image on November 7th, and it doesn't really tell us much. We see a couple of figures down there. One of them looks to be a Krogan. One of them looks to be an Asari. That could either be Drax and Phoebe from Andromeda, or, or it could be Rex and Liara, obviously, because they're old enough to still be around. But we have a very unique ship design. That's obviously some kind of new ship. And there's this big crater. It looks like a geth head. And it kind of looks like a geth body down in the rubble. 
And if you believe that the destroy ending is canon, then you would know that, yeah, the Geth are dead. But well, if they are dead, like, why are they bringing them back in like this? The more little tidbits we hear about this game, the more that I'm starting to believe that they are going to kind of retcon the endings in some form and just have, like, some kind of standard canon that negates all of it somehow, some little some little plot armor that makes it all not matter at all. And, and whether or not that's a good idea, who knows, but I'm finally starting to get faith in Bioware again. The Legendary Edition, despite it just being a remaster, did have love behind it. It does feel like the people at Bioware do care about these games. A lot of the original team isn't there, but a lot of the original team is actually coming back and working on things here and there. So if you love Mass Effect, I don't think our ride is over. I think we have a little bit of a journey to go. If you didn't like Andromeda, you know, that's unfortunate. I liked Andromeda. And I think they're going to use those characters in that world. And I want more choices and more long strands of dialogue. And maybe if we could see uh, some of our old favorites, that'd be cool too. But we finally have put to bed the ending of Mass Effect 3. Now there is only the future ahead. But in the meantime, while we wait for future Mass Effect games, I have a lot of videos on this channel, like I said, in the works. So stay tuned. And when those future games do come, Best believe I'm going to cover them. So subscribe because I know you're a cool person like that. Anyway, thank you so much. And until next time with that, I should go.